Well, the Conservative leader had a direct message for Corporate Canada, telling them in a letter published in the National Post that their current efforts in Ottawa are pointless, that Ottawa does not listen to their lobbying efforts, and that members to the Council of uh, Business Council of Alberta and the Canadian Federation of Independent Business should cancel their memberships and stop handing money over to those groups. Well, to talk about this, we're now joined by Dan Kelly. He is the President and the CEO of the Canadian Federation of Independent Business. Dan, good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Good to be with you. Listen, I'm going to start uh, by pointing out, uh, which may be the obvious, that Pierre Polyev is making a bigger point here. But in making that point, he does use your organization as an example, an example of, and forgive the terminology here, wasted effort that goes nowhere. Is the Conservative leader correct? Uh, well, certainly not with respect to my organization. I think he makes a couple of valuable points kind of later in his piece, but uh, but no, gosh, just in the most recent budget, uh, there was a two and a half billion dollar rebate for small and medium sized businesses from the carbon tax that had been stuck in Ottawa for five years. And I can tell you for certain, uh, one of the only reasons this happened is because of the advocacy of the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, the organization I run. So that is one concrete example. But, you know, are, are you worried about the impact uh, that Polyev's letter will actually have on your organization? Well, well, look, it is a bit, it's interesting because he's suggesting our members in Alberta should drop their memberships in CFIB because I guess we're not conservative enough. Um, but it is interesting because the premier of Alberta, Daniel Smith, was a former staff person, the head of our Alberta lobby group. So it, it is interesting. Interesting, as you say, and it, it seems to go to, to an increasing polarization in, in the Canadian political environment. Does that worry you, then, about how effective you can be able to lobby and, and influence decisions being made in Ottawa? Look, there, there's no question. This is, there, there's some hyper-partisanship that is going on right now. Uh, when you take a step back, I, I, look, I, I, give it, I give Pierre great credit. He has said this to me privately dozens and dozens of times in the meetings that 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 we've had with him over the years uh back probably a decade ago he he lectured me for a long long time about the reasons why my organization should give up nonpartisanship as one of our founding principles and endorse the conservative party he makes it he makes some arguments look unions and social policy groups they routinely will endorse a candidate endorse a political party fight on an election campaign for someone and then they have to work with whomever's in power. Uh, so he he is of the view that the conservatives, they look around and, you know, lots of groups like mine suggest things that they should do, but we're not there to, uh, to get them elected uh, or to help defeat a particular government. But I got to tell you, we have a multi-party system. I think my organization would be far less effective and have zero credibility if it were to endorse uh, a particular party or, or a particular candidate. Mm -hmm. You know, party endorsement aside, I, the, the letter also seems to make this point that if you want to change minds, you and other groups need to do it at the grassroots level. Will that change the way you do your lobbying as a result of this letter? Well, I think he makes there a really good and strong argument, but I will say that that is the way that we have operated for 53 years from the very beginnings of this organization. I don't think any objective observer of my organization would suggest that we are out, we aren't out there on some really tricky, sometimes unattractive issues, screaming and yelling, like defending the the use of the temporary foreign worker program or pushing back against huge minimum wage increases. There are some business associations and some individual businesses that do push the conservatives uh, to, to 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 represent them on tough issues, but then they themselves hide in the background. I get that point, uh, but that's not what we do at CFIB. I, I'm on the I'm on the front lines every day, standing with ministers and and politicians when they make good decisions, and fighting hard when they make bad ones, which is a big part of what I do. Okay, and, and you know, uh, but for for the last nine years or so, it has been a, a liberal government. Polyev and his party right now have been leading the polls for months. Uh, he says he will refuse to meet your group. He does so right now as the opposition leader. But how will you navigate a lack of access if he becomes prime minister? Well, look, I'll tell you one interesting fact. Uh, we have advanced public policy on probably a dozen major files, like standing with Christia Freeland in, on a major reduction in credit card processing fees last year. I've not had a single meeting with one on one meeting with Prime Minister since uh, Prime Minister Trudeau uh, since he was in office. 
So there are ways of affecting public policy change without necessarily meeting the, the, the top person in charge. Uh, we do that through grassroots lobbying every day. Having We have every single Conservative M MP uh, that uses our data almost daily in the House of Commons. Uh, there's lots of strategies we can use. I, I do think, though, that that that, that would change uh, taking office. Yeah, you may not want to meet with me but uh, or with other business association types, but the data that we provide, the insights that we provide are invaluable to whomever is in office uh, and certainly have been for the current government. We fought with them on a dozen or so issues, but agreed on others and, and worked with them where we can. You know, Dan, I'm listening to what you're saying here. I, I, I wonder, do you interpret this letter as a warning or as a political ploy? Uh, a bit of both. Look, the, the main reason that this is as public as this is right now is he is trying to establish the point with Canadians that he is not the plaything of the business community, that, that he's not just going to carry water for, for, for corporations or for business groups. Um, and I believe him. I think, I think he's right. Uh, and I think that that message that he's trying to make to the public is, is a correct and a valid one. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a surprise. Um, it's very political, but I think pretty honest. And, and, and so I accept that at, at face value. At the same time, uh, to, to ignore major business associations, the data that they collect, the information and ideas they put forward, the country would be worse off. Uh, I'm not overly worried that that's going to end up being the net result uh, if the government were to change. We're going to continue to operate in a nonpartisan fashion as we have for 53 years, um, and we'll work with whomever wishes to work with us uh, and scream and yell in the, side, in, the, in the sidelines if they don't. Dan Kelly, always appreciate the time. Thank you for this. Not at all.